Welcome to Exhibition. And hello, Nick Plowman. Hello, Richard. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. And uh, great to see you there, um, I presume, in your working space. Um, your exhibition is entitled Avalanche at James Macon Gallery in Melbourne. Uh, and all of the works in this exhibition are motifs or works which incorporate a, a single flower or basically a single flower stem. Why the choice for that single focus for this exhibition? But, well, the name Avalanche um, is sort of refers to uh, this, I guess, this uh, particular time in my life or a, a series of events in my life that um, seems like reflecting on them seems sort of immense. And I wanted to um, have a name that incorporated that. So the series of events um, were uh, infertility, IVF treatments, um, getting married, having a baby, finding out I had cancer, um, and then had subsequent surgeries around that. I mean, I was listening to Leonard Cohen's beautiful song, which I, which I love, and um, it just seemed to be the, this kind of obscure um, and wonderful name um, that seemed completely opposite to the subject matter. So mm. um, I liked that and I thought it was sort of perfect for the, for the show title. Um, I hope I recall correctly, but I think the first line from uh, that Leonard Cohen song was, um, I stepped into an avalanche. Right. Uh, it covered up my soul. Um, and, and in many ways, all of those events that you uh, enumerate to us uh, have been hugely significant life events mm -hmm. for you. And yet these works, by comparison, seem individually much more delicate. They are not an avalanche. So how do you, how do you bring those two things together? You know, I wanted to ha have a subject matter that was, um, I guess delicate and frail, um, but, you know, um, beautiful and strong and, and withstanding this avalanche. And thinking about all those things, being in hospital, having a baby, getting married, again, being in hospital with, um, you know, having the cancer surgery, all these things. There's a, a lot of these life events that we've got, um, flowers are attached to them somehow, you know, and they, they carry these emotions and sentiments and it's kind of this vessel or conduit for um, emotion and, and um, empathy. Flowers often seem to be or have been used as, as symbols, even currency in those major life events. And as you say, uh, the sharing of those life events between people. Can we go back to the, the way in which you've built up these images. How did that type of process begin and, and when did that begin for you? My niece used to come home or my wife used to go and pick my niece up from school and she would come and visit us for the afternoon before her mum finished work and she would sit there and she said to me one day, can I help with the drawings? And I said, absolutely. So then I was, you know, sitting up there with her drawing um, and I was just looking at her just reacting to these flowers um, and all the beautiful mark making that, that she was doing. And I was just, you know, it, I mean, kids' drawings are so amazing anyway. I'm fascinated by them. And I mean, they just don't know how good they are. Um, so I was looking at her works, work, her marks and thinking that's, that's a lovely way. And then that was sort of like, I'd try a bit of that. And she, you know, she used different pencils and, and fluoro uh, highlighters and different things that I probably wouldn't, um, get, uh, um, you know, grab myself. Um, so I just, it was just, it was play. And that's probably a big part of my work anyway. And my practice is that I always try to do something that I can't do or have difficulty doing. And then I always try to experiment and play and, and kind of enjoy the process. So I, I kind of try to have, have those two things running at the same time. Um, and I do like giving myself a problem to solve. So that's kind of um, where it all came from. And then again, when Sabine, like I was handing her pencils from, you know, the day dot, hoping she would do a drawing. And, and originally when she was three months old, she did her first drawing and 
just for the viewer, uh, we, we should clarify, Sabine is your young daughter. Yeah. And she's now how old? She's just turned 21 months. Yeah, she's had a 21st. It's, um, it's, it's not often that artists uh, collaborate to produce works, but you and she have effectively collaborated to produce uh, a, a number of works. How, how, do you, you know, how do you actually feel about that process? Presumably it's very enjoyable, but how do you feel about the results? One of the images that I first did, or well, that kind of led to the, the I guess the, the beginning of this show was, um, I was doing a watercolor of a flower and it was sort of pretty unsuccessful. So, um, well, I, what I thought was unsuccessful and then I just ripped it into four and it was like four equal pieces. And then I left it on the ground and um, Sabine just grabbed a pencil and, and made a few marks over them. And I was just, they were kind of these tiny little, you know, it was one flower, but in four, so it was these abstract um, colours and lines. And I was just like, oh, that's actually nice. So something that was going to go in the bin, now I've got, and it's kind of this collaboration, my failed drawing, and, and she made it. Like, she, she made the work successful for me. And again, it's probably nothing that I'll ever show, but it's, you know, it means a lot to me. And um, there's a figurative elements in, in some of the works for the show. Those actually, you can, I mean, if you look, Closely enough, there's parts of Sabine's foot and head and ear and hands in some of the flowers. Um, but I would just start working and, and looking at these images and then, I guess, kind of ingest that. Um, and, then, and then I am, I guess, reacting to the, to the flowers and the colours of the flowers. And, um, you know, um, numerous sort of approaches to beginning the works where I would um, draw draw on top of the flat so I draw directly on top of the flowers so quite quite a detailed drawing um, and then work back into it so I kind of wanted to have this sort of I guess you know all for me what's interesting about paintings and and artwork is the tension so I wanted to create that tension between the, the beautiful um, delicacy of the the flower and the, the print um, and then the kind of the freedom of drawing and mark making and then also um, balance it with elements that were quite clunky or, or uh, thicker medium application, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, so really it's kind of just a bit of a meditation, a bit of a conversation um, and an and exploration. The white gesso that uh, you mentioned uh, earlier, um, which, which plays a pom prominent role in many of the works, you seem to use almost as a drawing tool, often for defining uh, shapes where there are leaves defined by the absence of the white paint. Um, can you mm. tell us a little about the way in which you use a, a variety of materials as effectively drawing tools? I draw pretty much every day and I try to do um, before um, this COVID situation happened, I would do life drawing at least once a week. And I think you build up and I, as I said, my work's very much about experimenting and, and, um, and using playful elements in, um, in kind of looking for something new and, and exciting um, and connecting to that. Um, so I think all those things, I talk about when I teach drawing is that you build up this sort of um, this imaginary toolkit of things that you know work, so mediums that work well together or don't, or or, or ways you can solve um, particular problems or how two things sit together. So I think you know it's just about, and I hadn't really used any gouache for a long time, so you know I'm using charcoal a charcoal pouch with um, charcoal powder in it, so I'll be using that to. Um, disturb the the whiteness of the background of the paper, and then you know a, use an eraser to draw back into that. So you can you know um, you know an eraser can give just as beautiful a line as a, you know, a stick of charcoal. So it's really about just um, that playful element of, and um, I'm kind of interested in um, also in um, the, the subtleties around media and how much you can say without saying a whole lot you know there's there's biro there's pencil there's um you know 
kids crayons, there's um, gold paint, there's uh, oil paint, there's oil stick, there's, there's all these different things, there's gouache, all in these things. So it's, it's really about, I guess, it, and as I said before, connects back to that um, experimental, playful element of my work. Mm. And perhaps even ex uh, connects back to the title of the exhibition in a way. It's, a, it's an avalanche of different media that you've incorporated into these works. Yeah. yeah, yeah, well, exactly. You know, I'm very much uh, invested in the process and enjoy those, those, those tensions between materials as well, not just the tension of the image. Um, so uh, when those things happen, it, it's, it's, it's kind of a lovely part of the conversation or argument. These works in the exhibition in many ways are something of a contrast to the works which viewers may be more familiar with of yours, the, uh, the life drawing based figurative works and paintings, the, the multi perspectival portraits. Can you give us a sense of what in those works, those previous works you've been attempting to explore with the way in which you've looked at, at the figure and the face? I love drawing and it is continually difficult. Um, and it gets, it never gets any easier. I, I started a life drawing group years ago when I was in Brisbane. Mm. And what was actually occurring is that because I was a poor artist back then um, and paper was so expensive, I would, before the um, life drawing would start, I would rub out and erase some of the unsuccessful almost. Um, <laughs> Um, and then you know start again so um, and but what what ended up happening is that um, you know I just didn't have time to, to erase all these drawings and I started drawing on top of them I, I draw on the back a lot of my works from that period have both drawings on the front and back um, and then um, you know some I, I remember like sending him to an exhibition once and they were like there's two drawings here which one do we want to hang and i'm like oh no the good one they're like they're both <laughs> you know <laughs> well there's one so i end up crossing out some of them or erasing um or if someone would buy one they go oh there's a drawing on the back and i was like well there you go it's you know swap it over every six months um but so i just start i would start drawing on top of these images and then i kind of started just experimenting with with that process so I would, you know, there would be this almost drawing and um, parts of it would be successful. And then, so I'd kind of hinge the next drawing. If there was a similar pose or something, I'd hinge a drawing off, off part of the previous drawing. So it might be, you know, off the shoulder or the hip or the kneecap or something. Um, that's how it all began with that, the layering. And then more recently, I would be drawing and, um, again, it started with these almost with parts of the image being you know something something there to keep but this bit definitely not so i was i began just painting parts of the drawings out um and then and then work reworking the drawings and and so it, it might be the same session it might be a completely different um a completely different session and a completely different model personality gender you know i think that the there's a there's a empathy with um, life drawing that you're sort of connecting to um, another person and drawing another person and people are endlessly fascinating you know you know what it feels like to be human you don't know what it feels like to be a bowl of fruit or a or a landscape going back to the specific works in the exhibition uh, you mentioned that in in many ways they were produced for you as a response to an avalanche of quite significant events in your own life but what do you hope that viewers of the exhibition will take from the collected works as, a, as a, an emotional uh, message or uh, as a, a predominant feel? I'm not really there, I guess, to um, tell people what to, what to think about them or, or how to receive them. Um, but I think, you know, there is, again, going back, I think in all, you know, all good art, I think has uh, a storytelling element to it. To it. Um, 
Um, and that's what it is to be human, I guess, is we pass on our stories and experiences. Um, and then there is that tension. So there is that tension between um, what is photography, what is, what is, what is not, um, between what is delicate, what is clunky, between um, what is defined and what is blurry, all those things within the work, I think, um, create a conversation not only in um, how I've produced the works, but also in, in the final result. So it's sort of one of our, one of the jobs for, for a visual artist to create something that is interesting to look at. And I think the tension in work um, um, does that for me, yeah. Well, those tensions and connections are very much in evidence. So Nick Plowman, thanks very much for sharing your exhibition with us. Absolute pleasure. Thanks so much.